change through time. Um, this presentation is a survey of three recent projects that uh, deal with the theme of uh, representing or uh, experiencing change through time. Uh, included in it will be uh, nine different timelines and three pavilions. So, um, so the first, so uh, diversity of tactics. Um, a lot of our work, not all of our work, but a lot of our work does focus on the idea of telling time. And so what we're interested in about telling time or history is how time is represented, both textually and visually, and how users or people, even ourselves, experience it. So uh, a big project we're working on right now is for the Venice Biennale of Architecture with the Migrating Landscapes Organization, Sung Chan, and 548796 Architects. Um, we are currently, uh, or we have made, eight different timelines for eight different Canadian cities through the lens of migration. Uh, spanning from Vancouver, this is the one you're seeing here, uh, 50 feet long timeline of history uh, of the city uh, as it develops through, uh, through migration. Uh, what we were interested in at first, this timeline is a very kind of classic way of telling time. Timeline is a kind of art that's been done since the 1700s. Uh, a very linear approach, showing time, making people walk this 50 feet, um, not really playing that much uh, with it. Also, Calgary is the same way. Uh, what we try to do with time is not only show information, but also data. So as you see events flowing through time, there's these kinds of things that are happening, we also try to mix it up with statistics. So the viewer themselves starts to piece together a kind of history. Uh, with the Halifax timeline, we took a shift. We moved away from the strict line, and we decided to try and uh, approach history with a little bit of a more cyclical approach. That began with opening with a Mi'kmaq creation story opposed to ge geographic information or geological information. Uh, and it also included um, curating the stories a little bit more. Uh, if two stories were t or two facts were 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 years apart, but they spoke to each other in terms of not necessarily cause and effect, but just a relationship or a, a flow forward through time, we would just pucker them next to each other. This was something that we continued to develop with the Montreal timeline and then uh, conclude with the Toronto timeline. Uh, we, we also started to experiment with mapping people's migration stories or like their personal maps. And so we now come up, we've now working with telling time through maps. So using line weight thicknesses, uh, to denote uh, how long a place a person stays and distances to denote like how far they travel. So this is the national show. This is like the culmination of all the other seven timelines. And what was interesting about this and, and very important is that as we, as we did the, the research, we started to find out that uh, Canada is a very diverse country. Yeah, blah, that's pretty, pretty inter uh, obvious. But the idea was that we use these kind of hierarchies in terms of like leadership, legislation, regional histories statistics and then this kind of like visual timeline to kind of show uh, this kind of coming together where in the end we're all different but somehow this federation that we created uh, guides us and we tried to use this through this kind of uh, heads of leaders through like uh, since 1867 of like immigration, people who led immigration and people who also led um, uh, industry. So. You're currently seeing the timeline of currency tells the history of money from the formation of language to present day. Uh, it's an acrylic room in a safety deposit box room that's held together with steel. Uh, these columns, uh, 672 uh, checkbook sized pads of paper, they have the facts on facing the interior of the room and then they have uh, tiled images of the 20 G G20 central banks. Uh, people were invited to take facts that interested them uh, and through that process, it created a kind of um, analog animation, and the, the 20 images of the G20 central banks started collaging together. What was really funny about this project, or interesting, is that people, the way they choose their years is by their birthdays. People just immediately try to find the year they were born, and when they don't find it, they're like, oh, nothing happened in that year. And you're like, no, something happened, it just didn't make the final cut. So actually, that project had like something like 55,000 different sheets of paper on it. Um, this last project is quite different. It's called Art of the Danforth Innovators Fair. It's a series of programless pavilions. So it's three pavilions in Eastland Park. It's on the Danforth. It was part of Art of the Danforth. 
Um, and this project deals with time in a different way, where we're being very forward with time with the other projects, but this project deals with time and how people use the space. Moves away from the representation of, of change through time, and it crystallizes the experience of time. These were uh, installations in the park. This one uh, was 20 uh, sona tubes painted from invitation to, into Princess Pink to white, and it created this kind of threshold buttressed against the sidewalk uh, in an area of the park that didn't have a, a proper entrance or a very clearly defined entrance. This next one is just five triangular prisms that had hinged sides and could be pivoted to create uh, a series of formations or performance spaces or whatever. Uh, this final one is just sewn fabric around a flexible base uh, with this kind of wind catchment opening. Um, you could enter it, you could be on top of it. So we put these in this park and they were supposed to be there for three weeks. That was the, the challenge. So the idea is that the public is asked to interact with these pavilions however they choose. So at first it's very fun and playful. Uh, kids are moving around the columns. Um, they're going inside the, the chute. They're moving around um, the, the large ABS piping. But as we slowly found out, it's that in the end, all the pavilions were basically destroyed. So, uh, and, and, that, and, but that, and so this, this project started to represent something else through time where in real space or with these other activities, it's the pavilions themselves took on different shapes. Like the interaction where in currency is shaping something completely different. It's like choice is very, um, you're still very curated. This project became very loose and very open and the more we gave that, uh, the more things started to change. Uh, this was actually repaired by a group of small children who really took to the space and actually purchased these bamboo pipings to keep it up and propped it open like a tent. Um, the other thing is when we went back to the park, we started to talk to people and they started talking about how beautiful the pavilions were when they first uh, uh, opened. But this woman told me 